Ooh, ooh, angles are a bit funny, do you know what I'm saying? Hey people, what's up? And welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome. Welcome to the family. My name's Francesca, first year med student, trying to navigate myself through med school. And today, I hope you guys are ready for what I have to give to you. I hope you're ready, I hope you're ready. Are you ready, are you ready, are you ready? Everybody say yeah! Yeah! Today, I'm going to be reading the personal statement that got me four out of four of my medicine offers, including a place at the University of Oxford. Imperial College London, King's College London and Edinburgh University. In this video I'll be reading my statement, I'll be making comments on it along the way explaining why I've said certain things, explaining why I've structured it the way I have. I came to the realisation that I will help so many of you guys out there by sharing my personal statement and whilst I was writing my own statement what really helped was to see model personal statements. I'll put a link down to Ibsmo's video and he graduated from the University of Cambridge but he's made a video where he has linked a Google Drive folder to tons and tons of Oxford and Cambridge personal statements from various different subjects so definitely check out his video. I started writing my personal statement from the summer of year 12 to year 13. That summer was really hectic because I was doing my UK cat and um, I was also doing loads of work experience and you know writing my personal statement and trying to rest you know because that's important that, that's important. So without further ado let's get into reading my statement. So in terms of structuring my personal statement, this is genuinely the advice that I'd give. The first part of your statement, usually your introduction, should focus on your motivation. Why is it that you want to do your course? You need to sell your motivation in a very personalised and non-cliche way. Leave the introduction till last. In my opinion, it was the hardest part of my personal statement and in a sense it is the most important because that's how you're going to grab the admissions tutor who spent days, hours reading over thousands of personal statements and your intro is a platform for you to stand out instantly to them. So next you go on to talk about your exploration of your subject, what things you did to gain a further insight into your subject that you're applying to, making you a more competitive applicant because you know what your subject will entail. And next you'll talk about suitability, why is it that you're suitable for that course? And finally your conclusion, again this is an opportunity for you to showcase why you want to do your course so my intro to me medicine is an art of diagnoses using abstract thinking alongside my outstanding listening skills to achieve the best patient outcome is the part of medicine that I find incredibly fulfilling thorough research fused with my participation in three weeks of hospital placements and medical conferences has allowed for an informed decision to pursue such a stimulating vocation so I think what stands out in my introduction is my punchy opening line to me medicine is an art of diagnoses guys I have to admit this is an opening sentence that did take me a while to come up with and think about and it did take a matter of drafting and redrafting um they don't have to be as dramatic as that I've seen opening lines that are less dramatic but still equally as effective and even more powerful than that guys one thing I can say a mistake I made is I stretched it with my vocabulary the vocab that I used was unnecessary I could have used much simpler language to deliver the same message another thing that I can point out with my intro is that I kind of plugged myself in the sense that I talked about how I'd undergone thorough research participated in three weeks of hospital placements and medical conferences and the reason why I did this is because in my personal statement I didn't manage to fit all of the work experience super correct that I'd managed to do like guys I did five six placements but I only spoke about two or three in my statement so in a way I still managed to convey all the stuff that I'd done without using up the characters my second paragraph and this is part of the exploration bit of my personal statement my experience of respiratory ward rounds was enlightening I was struck by the degree of trust placed in the staff stressing the unparalleled impact that they have on individuals. Such reciprocity is fundamental to the patient-doctor rapport. Having been a patient myself, I found shadowing my old dermatologist particularly interesting as I discovered the intricate pathogenesis of acne, which had once had held such a psychological bearing on me. I observed how holistic care coupled with empathy could alleviate this strain on the most vulnerable. Doctor's duty to both the physical and emotional cuts through the heart of medicine and distinguishes it from pure science. 
Although it has been difficult to see the elderly deteriorate in health and senility, volunteering weekly at St. Martin's Care Home has instilled in me an appreciation of how empathetic relationships and simple talk can utterly reduce loneliness and impact on the well-being of, of individuals. My time here has shed light on the crippling implications of an aging population on an overburdened NHS and underfunded social care system. I am infused by the prospect of working towards a solution for this demographic. So the way I genuinely structure each paragraph or each section of my personal statement is that I open up with a short sentence. So here, my experience of respiratory ward rounds was enlightening and this usually kind of gives a hint about what the rest of the paragraph will be about. And similarly, I end the paragraph or the section with a summarizing sentence. So in a sense, I maintain that cyclical structure all throughout my statement, making it seem more clear, concise and coherent. So in this paragraph, it's mainly focused on my work experience placements. But one thing you can observe is that I mix different placements together and I manage to make it flow. Every sentence linked onto the previous sentence. And I talk about my own experiences in being a patient and this is where I invite you guys to include any personal anecdotal kind of experiences that you've had which you could potentially relate to why you want to do your course this isn't to say that if you don't have any of these experiences for yourself that you should make them up it's better to be authentic and to not lie about them because guys if you get interviewed and they ask you about that the experience that you've made up it's a bit of a sticky one still. It's yeah. a big of a sticky one still. So in medicine, the patient doctor rapport, so essentially their relationship is incredibly important. And I used my own experience of being a patient to kind of play the angle of being on both sides of that relationship. So I was a patient when I had my acne and I was being treated by my dermatologist, but I also was kind of on the doctor side of things when I was doing my work experience placement and shadowing. Here's a key example of how I've taken one of my experiences during my shadowing and reflected upon it to gain a further insight into the skills of a doctor. I observe how holistic care coupled with empathy could alleviate the strain on the most vulnerable and then I go on to say doctors due to both the physical and emotional cuts through the heart of medicine and distinguishes it from pure science. So I identify that I know it's a doctor's duty to care for both the physical and emotional aspects of the patients and I talk about how this separates medicine from being a pure science. So again I'm showing insight to demonstrate that it's medicine that I want to do in its whole entirety because if I wanted to do the scientific component I could have applied to do biochemistry, biomed um, and not that I just enjoyed the clinical side of, of medicine because if that was the case I could have applied to be a nurse, a physiotherapist. Do you, do you get my drift? Um, and later on in my statement I go on to talk about my long-term volunteering in a care home and I focus on the skills that I learned and another thing I do is I use this experience to talk about how it made me reflect on the situation of the NHS and how an aging population is becoming an increasing problem for the NHS. So essentially I've taken this experience which at a surface level the skills that you can talk about are you know empathy, kindness, communication, time management but I've taken it a step further. I've used this experience to further my insight into the medical sphere into the NHS and that's a perfect example of developing your ideas in your personal statement. Now my third paragraph is also an exploration paragraph. My exploration in the medical sphere unveiled the ethical minefields doctors face daily. I observed how cardiologists work in stressful ethical situations such as with a heroin addict suffering from endocarditis, determined to leave the ward, the risk of relapse and endangering her life fueled the complexity of the dilemma and thus demanded resilience, abstract thinking and effective communication from the multidisciplinary team. Keyword. This was inspiring and enriched my grasp that even if decisions go against your belief and patient beneficence, autonomy should be respected. Such respect is vital for my successful practice. I try to emulate this in my part-time job when handling conflicts in customer demands under pressure. Ooh, ooh, this is a hench paragraph. And guys, I'd just like to say again, there was just so much unnecessary complex language I could have made this so much simpler like it was such a mouthful to read and you have to take that into consideration that the same way you're reading your own statement will be the same way these admissions tutors will 
be reading your statement like do them a favor and make it easy on them to read your statement so yeah this paragraph talks about my work experience during cardiology and although i experienced so many amazing things i saw so many medical procedures and complex cases but i didn't mention that in my statement one because i didn't have enough characters but two there were better experiences during my cardiology placement that would enable me to reflect so in this paragraph i talk about a heroin addict who was suffering from a heart infection and guys i used the term endocarditis because that's a specific medical condition i was also asked about this in my interview so make sure any condition that you mention any book you mention you know enough to talk about it this paragraph also focused on medical ethics which is an important topic in the medical sphere and for medics out there this is something that you'll be tested in whether that's in your entrance exams or in your interview and finally to conclude the paragraph i take the skills that i've observed in the doctors and i reflect upon it then i think about how how I can implement that into my own life and guys this is something that I highly recommend for you you saw a doctor communicating in this way and inspired you to also do the same in your own life here I say I try to emulate this in my part-time job when handling conflicts and customer demands under pressure guys guess what I was talking about McDonald's and guys like you could take anything like literally working at McDonald's and you can shape it twist it in a way that you can write it in your personal statement to get you into med school to get you into university the next paragraph is also exploration this paragraph is more focused on the academic stuff so medicine is ever evolving what is accepted as scientific today will be discarded by doctors of tomorrow in light of new cutting edge research such uncertainty means medicine demands lifelong learning key phrase <laughs> At a medicinal chemistry lecture, plug, I learnt of how cases such as thalidomide have called for a rigorous drug discovery process, highlighting the importance of scepticism in research. I was keen to discuss with a consultant the need for full transparency around clinical trials and FDA's discovery of the scandalous ineffectiveness of Tamiflu. He encouraged me to read Goldacre's Bad Pharma, which illustrated how drug companies mislead doctors and inherently threaten patient safety. My time spent in various hospitals has emphasised the universal importance of providing safe quality care so guys what i encourage you to do in your personal statements is to make sure that your things link on to each other it's better to have less things that make sense and link and flow than way more things that are all over the place sporadic and make your statement incoherent so the thought process i've gone through in this statement is that i've attended a medicinal chemistry lecture talking about thalidomide and the drug discovery process two i've done a related work experience placement i've actively taken it upon myself to have a conversation with a consultant about what i learned in the lecture number three has suggested that i go and read this book and i've read it and number four i've done further research into the scandalous ineffectiveness of Tamiflu. So you can see that progression. You can see how much of an active student I am through this. And guys, one thing I can say is make sure you research any scientific concept you mention in your statement. Why? Because the statement I made here about how Tamiflu um, had a scandalous ineffectiveness was scientifically incorrect. I was ignorant in the sense that I read one or two articles on the internet and I didn't do my research enough and I just made this conclusion in my statement. One thing I can say about mentioning books in your personal statement is only mention them if they're relevant and you've enjoyed reading them. The more books you mention in your personal statement, the more opportunity and points there are for interviewers to ask you questions. So if you've included five books in your personal statement, it's going to be really stressful leading up to your interview because you have to reread five books. You have to prepare a lot more compared to if you just wrote about one book but wrote about it in depth. And the final paragraph, and this is a mixture of suitability and also the conclusion. Having spoken to my mentors during my unique summer school i appreciate the stressful life of a medic thus alongside academia i enjoy being a regular member of my local church and creating pastoral and academic support videos which have since gained over forty-five thousand views i had to plug my youtube there of course man um selected as a patient partner at my hospital and competing for west <laughs> sorry guys i'm just like la i'm laughing because i put i was selected as a patient partner but in reality everyone who applied got the p everyone who applied got a place as a patient 
as a patient partner. Um, and competing for West Midlands Netball also cultures vital teamwork, stress relief and time management. Recognised by my peers, I was awarded a tribute award for my unwavering commitment to sports and wider society. As head girl, I have to deliver presentations and this coupled with three years of translating French to English challenges my confidence and ability to coherently articulate concepts. This is essentially my extra curric paragraph and as you can see, as a proportion, it's so much smaller than the rest of my personal statement. Genuinely across Oxbridge courses it is an 80 to 20 ratio and what I can encourage you guys is that if you have the characters to do so develop things because as I keep preaching reflection is key like there's no good you doing all these amazing things having accomplished all these amazing things if you can't reflect so if you can reflect but I couldn't I didn't have enough characters so I was just listing 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 again at the start of this paragraph I talk about how I understand and appreciate that being a medic is stressful um, then I go on to showcase the things that I do on the side as stress relieving measures and now the concluding line on the frontier of healthcare doctors are strained with long hours and burnout ultimately I feel I possess the drive enthusiasm and acquisitive nature to rise to this challenge again this demonstrates insight into the true realities of being a practicing doctor in the NHS. So guys we have reached the end of my personal statements meaning we have reached the end of this video. In no shape or form am I bragging about my personal statement because there are so many areas of improvement and if you guys want me to film a video where I talk about how I could have improved this statement so I criticise rip apart this statement I will do so and I will get my friends to give me their opinions on it so I'm not biased but at the end of the day this was the statement that I wrote that contributed to me getting four out of four of my medicine offers including Oxford. One thing I could say when you start giving your personal statement to people to review it and give you feedback is take what they say with a pinch of salt because what I experienced was kind of conflicting opinions about certain parts of my statement. Some people would say certain parts was good, some people would say certain parts were bad. Always try and be genuine through your personal statement. If you want to include something, include it. If someone says that it's not good but you're truly passionate about what you're saying, include it. At the end of the day it's your personal statement. You should be the one to have the final say. If you have any questions on personal statements, anything about the application process in general, make sure to hit me in the comment section below. There are so many of you guys who are watching this video who aren't subscribed, so if you can, please, please, please take a second to just click that subscribe button. It will mean the absolute world to me. And yeah, enough said. I hope you guys have a beautiful and blessed day. I love you all, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.